After Ayuso's radio stopped working yesterday, he and Almeida couldn't really make it work today. Catalunya stage seven, the final stage. They do the Alto Castel del Monduit circuit around Barcelona. The Gent won in a break last year against uh, Morich, actually. It's got a really steep pinch uh, at the top of this circuit, then a fast flowing descent. It's hard to get away. It's hard at the moment for their big B, big GC gaps, but Igita would be under pressure from Ineos. He had a pretty good team here, to be honest. Ineos only had Carapaz helped by Castro Viejo and Rodriguez. He was in second on GC, Almeida third on GC when they rolled out from Barcelona. But a decent sized breakaway normally forms on this stage. It featured, I think, Stora, Mark Soler of UAE Team Emirates, Catalan Rider, as well as Kreuzweig, Louis Mankies, and Bora were at the front doing a really good job, keeping it maybe too close, to be honest. The problem was Dylan Turns was in there. He was on two minutes. So they wanted to keep it under control. And as they entered the circuit in Barcelona, you know X started helping as well. They got Johannesson, who's an enemy of the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast, but admittedly a very, very good rider, and he's very fast, so he could win a sprint from a reduced group. And Bora, which was really good, weren't pacing too hard. They didn't really care about the break at 30 seconds. Igita looking extremely comfortable. Flawless performance from the young Colombian today. He came under attack on the second or third last climb of the Monduith circuit. You can see how steep it is going up there, looking over the port of Barcelona, but... They didn't really, there was no attacks at that point. It was Rodriguez pacing the gap, the break with, I think, oh, Pacher, Kreuzweig had 20 seconds. Carthy was just off the front. The next time round, Rodriguez full sends it, and now we see splits. And Carapaz said, he's like, yesterday in the post-race interview, I'm not here to get second. I might have won the stage, but I'm going to try. And this is why he's so entertaining as a racer. He goes, he's got a Gita glued to his wheel. Johannesson is just out of shot. On the right-hand side, the Uno X rider, he's about fifth or sixth in GC. And a really good performance from him in Uno X's first World Tour stage race ever, I think. On the descent, Carapaz looked a bit suspect again, or maybe he just wanted a Gita to close it. This is the group we had. That's not Almeida. Almeida was dropped again on that climb. I think his legs were okay. Whether it's a positioning issue, I'm not sure. That's Juan Ayuso there, who's fifth on GC for UAE Team Emirates. And before this race, it seems like they must have been told, as Petrago attacks for Bahrain, he's lost a lot of time. The young Colombian rider who won a stage on a punchy finish in Saudi Tour at the start of this year. Great attack from him because the GC guys don't care. He's not a GC threat. It seems like UAE told Ayuso and Almeida they both would have free rolls at this race, and Soler. And that never changed during the race, regardless of their GC positions, which... You rarely see, like Hindley, I'm sure he and Higita got given a similar message at the start of the race, but now Higita's in the leader's jersey and Hindley's far back on GC. Hindley paced and did a really good job for Higita, shutting this down, but not hard pacing either, staying with Higita. And that's why on the last climb, attacks came from Caja Rural, from Gabregs Gabir on Trek Segafredo. Ayuso looks back, sees Almeida, and Almeida, again, it's, it's he's not on Higita or Carapaz's wheel. He's sort of always off their wheel a little bit, going the, the wrong way around or the long way around. Ayuso, behind Johannesson, again, you see Almeida out of position, sparks it on this last ascent. And actually, having two guys on GC for UAE was an advantage today. The theory would be you would roll attacks with the two of them on the climbs. We, we didn't really see that. They were a minute back. Ayuso sees, uh, he sees Almeida coming, attacking on his left, and he sparks it in front of Almeida, and it's almost like there's no coordination here. Like, Almeida should have let Ayuso go at this point so that he can take time and put... But it's it's too late to take a minute anyway at this point. So it's really just the stage on offer, and he's, yeah, bridging Igita and Johannesson back to Ayuso, eventually over the top countering. But Almeida's always going to get caught on this descent because... He's not as fast as a sender as Ayuso or Igita. I guess the silver lining for UA is Ayuso is really, really good. I think he looks so good in this race. Yes, he struggled on Boitao, but Molina, he was really strong. He looks very punchy, good descender. And here, one of them has to pace. The car has to tell one of you has to go to the front. You're the only guys with two teammates in the group. O'Connor's no threat in the sprint. Yeah, Igita and Johannesson are fast, but Almeida and Ayuso are fast too. It doesn't matter which one. It probably should be... Ayuso, 
leading out Almeida, but he doesn't seem to think so, and because Almeida's in third on GC, or Ayuso should just ride to protect Almeida's third on GC. He actually goes clear on the descent, dropping Almeida off the wheel on the descent, and once again, Igita was perfect today. Shut down the Ayuso attack, shut down Carapaz attack on the second last attempt, ascent, shut down the Johannesson move before then, and it's now actually Almeida shutting down Johannesson on the flat, and it, it slows down completely. And this race kind of fizzles out at the end with Quintana coming back with O'Connor attacking and then Almeida protecting his own third on GC. We will see this in Basque Country again if you know, if UAE can't sort this out. They have Ayuso, Almeida, McNulty, Micah, Formolo as provisional starters. You see Ayuso on the radio here. They're all really good, but you have to have some riders folding into a domestique role at some point, and we didn't see that. Now, Portuguese Twitter is not happy about the support Almeida got. I would also say Almeida should take responsibility for not being asleep at the start of the first climb of the day yesterday. But yeah, they could have helped him a bit more yesterday as well. In the end, the group came back, and Bagioli, the quick man from Quick Step, took his first ever World Tour win. We didn't see him all stage. He wasn't the protagonist. We had the GC guys attacking. He came back literally on that descent and then sparked Volta in the final sprint with actually Ayuso taking fourth. In terms of GC, Aguita takes his first World Tour GC victory. Huge win for him. Bora must be very, very happy, and they played the last couple of stages very well. But I hope you enjoyed the video. We'll be back with some editorials next week, some top 10 climbing performances so far in this season. It's not too early to do a top 10 ranking. Otherwise, check out the Lantern Rouge Cycling Podcast for the Hen Babel Hem recap. I'm sure you'll enjoy it, and I'll see you next week. Ciao.